Before we start this video, you can follow along in this tutorial by going to the Pneumorphic repo github that I have created links in the description and you can go to the branch 2 analog clock UI if you have not caught up to the previous video so in the previous video we have created the layouts of the app we have the title the buttons and how it is normally reacted inside the pneumorphic repository you have the different pneumorphic widgets that I have created in the earlier videos as well so let's move on to the video Currently, we are creating this timer pneumorphic app and we have already created the layouts of the app itself. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on creating the digital clock UI that we have over here. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to create a container with a border radius, which means it's going to curve the edges of the container and at the same time, we are going to create the pneumorphic effect where so it has the white shadow and the dark shadow at the opposite ends of the container diagonally. So this gives the effect that the widget is formed from the ground rather than levitating or floating in the app. So it reflects the light and the shadow has been created over here. Inside our file, we have here a row that consists of the title and the pneumorphic hamburger button and then we have some spacing and then we have this green container so now we are just going to extract this widget and let's call this pneumorphic digital clock alright so now we have created this pneumorphic digital clock what we can do is that we can create a file let's call pneumorphic digital underscore clock dot dot and now let's put our digital clock inside our newly created file at the same time let's import the widget now we are also importing our digital clock inside our file alright so let's save this now we can cancel the main dot dot so the next thing that we need to do is we need to have a border radius so in order for us to have a curve radius on the edge of the container is to create a decoration first call box decoration so once you have created a box decoration if you save this you could see that the color is now inside the box decoration that means you have to put the color parameters inside the box decoration and now it works so just one tip for you guys the next thing is that we have to create a border radius and let's put in border radius circular with 15 All right so it looks something very similar to what we want next with the box decoration we can create some shadows diagonally so let's create them under the box shadow parameters and it's a list of box shadow classes so what we can do is we can create a box shadow and then under let's create two of them because we, it consists of one white and one dark shadow so under here we can put the color let's put in the colors white and at the same time let's put this color if you save this right nothing happens because we never put in the offset so the offset is the position of the shadow that we are showing so let's put in the offset and let's put the x-axis and y-axis for negative 5 and negative 5 all right same goes here let's put this in the offset of 5 and 5 let's see how it looks like so you can see that the shadow looks fair it's okay <laughs> so what we can do is it is very solid meaning that it doesn't dissipate itself so how do you make it a little bit more blurry is to have a blur radius let's put in a blur radius of 15 and let's do the same with this okay so let's put a comma so it's readable for us so let's save this and you can see that it has dissipated uh, one thing that we can take note is that the dark shadow is not exactly showing so we can move it downward so 
let's put it 10.5 for both and let's put this as transparent as you can see the shadow itself so you can see that the shadow here is dark and the shadow here is light and you can see the blur radius that has been created so at the same time it is like a stack meaning if you put the first shadow then it will be behind the shadow that we have created just after it so you can see that this has been created for us next is that we need to make the colors the same as this container so let's create this color how i get these colors is using a color picker so you can go to chrome extension and you can just choose a color picker i choose this it's called colorzilla you can download it from the chrome extension store what it does is a very simple color picker that you can just grab an example is that if you were to go to grab this containers color we copy this and then it copies us this number and then if we paste it we can paste it like this all right i've already gotten the color let's save this you can see the container has been created for us now you can see that the white shadow is much more prominent and the dark shadow it looks so much better now okay so once we are done with the shadow the next thing that we need to do is to have the white container and a watch container with a border i would say the digital clock with this border so what we can do is we can create a smaller container within this big container under this container we have a child parameter let's have a center okay at the same time let's use this widget called layout builder so for those who don't know layout builder is just like a you could say a container that gives a constraint that we can use so the constraint that we are using is this outer container constraint we can use some simple percentage in order for us to create the height and width of this analog background so for layout builder we have to return a builder parameter with the context and the constraints let's return a container with the height constraints or max height and then we can put the width also now at the same time uh, we can put in the color just for example colors dot green and let's play around maybe let's put 0 0.7 then for the width let's put 0.8 let's save this okay so it's not exactly where we want so i think this has to be a bit wider and also a bit taller so let's put this 95 and let's put a height as maybe 85 let's save this all right it looks very close but i think the height can be a bit taller because i think this is bigger than this height so let's put 87 okay i think it's good enough if you can't see the <laughs> if you can't see the colors then don't worry what you can do is you can create another color parameter then comment this down and then put another color that's easier to see so now you can see exactly the width like okay this is i think better all right so you can just command z or control z and then at the same time let's put the color of the analog so what you can do is you can pick the color using the color picker all right one thing to note is that if you see carefully the color is not exactly consistent meaning here is lighter than this side so that means we need a gradient instead of a solid color so what we can do is we can go to the decoration parameter and let's have the box decoration again and there's this parameter called gradient so it requires a gradient a gradient that is very straightforward you have two colors and then it just goes from one color to the other so you can begin from the top right and then you can end somewhere else so we're going to use linear gradient so it requires a list of colors and let's save this you can see that the color is now very similar to what we are trying to emulate at the same time we need a box radius so what we can do is we can just copy and paste and then you can see the box radius is not exactly what we want so let's make it smaller let's put it 10 and i think it is what we want right now 
we can change the height a little bit maybe 88 next thing is that we need to create the border so this line that surrounds the inside of the container so there's this border parameter that requires a border class then you can have all that surrounds everywhere and we can have the color this color over here and let's put in the width let's put number two all right so now it's very close to what we are trying to emulate over here i think it's pretty close once you are done with the containers we are left with the analog numbers so let's focus on one number and its shape so this shape is i think a bit complicated but you can also create inside flutter as it gives you the liberty to create your own shapes so after much googling there is this article by flutter institute it tries to create a clock with the digital clock face so you can read it and he really explains on how to create using math so for myself i didn't really read the whole thing but if you want you can read it so he have created library inside his github which i'm going to put in the links in the description and this is the library that he has created so it is a class of digital number that will have a value pad left meaning spacing on the left because in your widget over here you need some space in between each number and semicolon and then you have your height and you have your color itself so you could read his code and it's you could see there's a lot of math that's required in order for you to create the analog number so what i do is i just copy the whole code and paste it inside my own library i didn't make any changes to his code so what you can do is you can create a container that fits all of the numbers inside so under the container let's put in the child parameter so let's create a container and let's also make use of the height and width let's put in height so since we are using constraints multiple time what we can do is we can create a variable let's call it max height all right and at the same time let's put in max width okay so we can just delete this both and then at the same time let's put here max height and with the width max width all right so let's put in the height for this maybe times 0 0.5 and this width let's put this 0 0.7 and let's center this container and let's put the color as usual green let's save this and see how it looks like mm, it looks fairly okay so let's extract this widget as its own let's call it digital clock because it only has the digital clock face so once you extract any parameters that you use outside of the widget flutter has created for us constructor and the parameter let's create the digital number before we create a digital number how many numbers do you see inside this analog number so actually the analog number has two different shades the first one is the lighter shade and the second one is the darker shade it's because once you put them together you can give the illusion of a number that's being formed however how are we going to do that so there's a simple way what you can do is you can just put the dark shade on top of the lighter shade and you will give off this effect because you want to be as close to the design as possible so let's have a child let's put in digital number so let's put in the value for example one let's maybe put a height as 0 0.3 and the color what should we put the color as let's put black all right let's save this all right so you can see that our number has been created but we need the lighter shade behind this number so what we can do is we can create a stack so wrap this widget with a stack and let's 
convert this to a children. So instead of the value 1, let's have the value 8. And for this black, let's put the black as maybe 26. And let's not have the green over here. Let's save this. And there you go. You can see that we have created the digital clock as close to what the design is trying to do. Even though it's a bit thicker, but it's okay. So I think the, I would say this is called the background number. It's pretty obvious and it's confusing for us. So let's put a notch down to maybe 12. Let's save this. All right, so now it's easier to read. So let's put this as its own widget. Let's put this wrap, extract this widget. And let's call this digital number with BG. Let's document BG is equal to stands for background. So we have our max height over here. We are not hard coding this number. So what we can do is we can create a parameter called value with a type integer. Let's add a parameter, which this is required. So let's put this value as maybe five. Let's save this. All right, so let's put in the parameter value over here. See that it is five. All right, we have already done with one number. Now we need to create the different numbers together. So what we can do is to pair them up. So since we have digital number with background, we need to create a row. So let's wrap this with a row. Let's save this and see how it looks like. Looks the same. So now it's more centered. If we were to put in the color green to see whether it's centered, you could see it's centered, but it's squashed to the left, which is fine. So now we are going to create the hours, minutes, and seconds analog numbers. So let's just put this together and save this. You see that they are very close to each other. Okay, since they are like all, all the same and once we put in a value, they will change accordingly, right? So let's create a function to generate this list of widgets. So let's create a function. Let's say, let's call create number time and then this integer is the number time argument and this returns us a list of digital number with background if you hover over it bg stands for background great so let's return this whole list return so you got your max height and width so what you can do is let's add in another curly brackets so that it gets a max height inside our digital clock widget. And now let's put the value as number time. Okay, let's put this as zero first. We can put a semicolon. Let's save this. Now let's remove these widgets and let's type in create number time. Let's put in five. All right, so this element type return us this list. For example, if we have the hours, minutes, and seconds, so we can use this spread operator. That means it takes out the list and all the widgets will be arranged accordingly. So we put this value as zero. Let's put as nine. Let's put as five. Let's save this. You can see that the first two digits is zero, second two digits is nine, and third two digits is five. Okay, at the same time, we can actually space them evenly. So main axis alignment to space evenly. And there you go. So let's put this as one for example. Okay, so we are very close. Now we have 195. However, what if we have two digits? So we put 11 and then you have this anomaly or bug. So we have to create a function that says whether we have two digits or one digit. All right, what we need to do is we need to, I think, create a Boolean to see whether our number is either one digit or two digit. Because once it's one digit, then we can put in the value as zero. And if it's two digit, then we can just let the value be its, its own integer. So first let's create the Boolean. It's number two digits. And one thing that you can do is to have the number time, two string dot length is equal to two. So now we know that our number time over here, whether it is two, because once it becomes a string, we can know what 
the actual number of integers they have. So it's number two digits. So we can make use of this uh, boolean. So we will put this here. It's number two digits. Then we will put zero. Else we will put first digit. So the first digit is when we have two digits. So final first digit is equal to is number two digits. Then we will have our number string, the first one. So our number that we pass in will be converted into a string and we can get the first string. So an example, if the number is 23, we will get the first number by using the index else it will become zero. Okay, so that's the first digit. How about the second digit? So final second digit is equal to is number two digits. If number is two digits, then we will get the second one, which is the index position of one. If not, then we will put the number time itself. All right, so let's put in the second digit over here and then let's put the first digit over here. So we have added in the ternary operator that allows us to, you know, have a very simple conditional statement and return of what we are trying to return. So let's save this. So it says type string is not a subtype of integer. We are actually returning a string because the string here does not go back into a integer. So what we can do is we can use the integer method. Let's call parse. And let's use this to convert our string into an integer. So let's do the same with the second digit. All right, so let's save this. Now 11 works. What if we put 99? Let's save this. All right, works. And then let's put this as 76. Okay, so now everything works for two digits. So one thing that you ha have seen is that the number here can go up to 99 and 76. So what we have to do is to make sure that the number does not go more than 60. So let's put in something to catch this use case. So let's create this thing called parsed number time variable. And let's put this number time modulo 60. What this means is that it will return us the remainder of the division with 60. So if we change the number time that we have here to parsed number time, we save this. Now you could see that if we put 76, it will put 16. If we put 99, it will put 39. All right. What if we put three digits? One, one, one. Let's save this. It will put 51, which is correct. So there won't be any case where we will have 111 because the hours, this will be the hour clock, this will be the minutes clock, and this will be the seconds clock. And we are left with one more UI, which is the semicolon. So inside Killer Monk of Flutter Institute's Octo Clock app, there is this digital colon. So these is, are the two squares that he have created using Paint. So what you can do is you can copy and paste and name it as digital colon. All right, so at the same time, you can just put in between the hours, minutes, and seconds widgets that we have created. So let's do that. So let's put the height. Let's put max height of maybe 0 0.3. And then the color, let's put in the colors dot black 87. Okay. At the same time, we can just copy this and save this. Okay, so it looks very close on what we want to do. So I think it's a bit small. So what we can do is we can just have our digital number with background widget to have a higher height. All right, so I think it looks very close to what we are trying to do. Lastly, this doesn't really make sense to us. So what we can do is we can create a variable Let's call this hours, go to create number time, maybe 11. And then we put here minutes, and then we put here seconds. So instead of all of this create number time we that we don't understand, so let's delete them. Let's put in here hours, hours. 
let's put in minutes and let's put here seconds I'm going to put this alright so you could see that it looks so much more readable now that so we know that this is the hours widget, minutes widget, seconds widget let's put here 0 put here 59 let's put here 26 okay alright so there we have it the UI that we have created for our digital clock now what we need to do is we need to make it tick so in the upcoming video I'm going to share on how to make this timer tick when you press a button and then it resets and it's and then it becomes zero so if you like this video give it a thumbs up like and subscribe for more of this uh, tutorial you can always give a like to the pneumorphic widget so more people can discover and continue this pneumorphic app all right so see you bye bye